Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at substantive analytical procedures and test of detail balances when it comes to the payroll and personnel cycle. Now, we are still working on the, the payroll and personnel cycle, and this will be the third recording in this session. We looked at the payroll and the personnel cycle in general as an introduction. We looked at controls and substantive tests of transaction. In this session, we would look at analytical procedures and test of balance details. So the first thing I always remind you is what is analytical procedures? Well, it's the study of relationship between data and various figures. It could be ratio analysis, horizontal analysis, vertical analysis, so on and so forth. Why do you perform uh, analytical procedures? You're looking for unusual, unusual relationship or unusual fluctuation between various accounts. And we're going to look at some common ones that we use for uh, uh, for uh, for the payroll for the payroll cycle, and remember, analytical procedures are used at three stages. I know I keep repeating myself, but it's good when when I repeat this, you will get it. You would remember it for the exam. You would understand it. It's at the beginning of the audit as a part of the risk assessment procedures, which is required during the audit, which what we're going to be doing now, which is an optional step. You would use your judgment depending if analytical procedures are useful or not. And most of the time, analytical procedures are useful. But again, you will use your judgment. And obviously, at the end of the audit, which we will see later on, you'd have to use analytical procedures to look at the overall pictures. So let's go ahead and look at some common analytical procedures that we use in the payroll cycle. The first one we could look at is compare the payroll expense and account balances with prior year. You adjust for pay increases and increase in volume. Let's assume you have 50 employees. And on average, the company pays them on average just they pay $50,000 per employee. So their payroll expense should be around $2.5 million. Now, this was the prior year. Now, this year, let's assume they, they still have 50 employees, but they raise their pay by 3%. So what you do is you'll take the, if they raise their pay by 3%, you'll take the 50,000, increase it, multiply it by 1.03, that take 50,000 times whatever that number is, and you should have an idea what the payroll should be. So this is analytical procedures, okay? So you're looking if there's any misstatement in expense, okay? So let me just give you the number. If we take 2.5 million, multiply it by 1.04, it should be, um, uh, I'm sorry, 50,000. Let's start with 50,000. If we take 50,000, and we multiply it by 1.04. Just to kind of, I like to use the numbers this way. It's easier for you to remember what we did. So the average salary is now 51,500. And we'll multiply this by 50. So their payroll should be around 2,575,000. Now you could compare this number to what they have. If they have approximately within few thousands, then you should be good. If they have 2 million, then you should question it. If they have 3 million, you should question it. In other words, you're looking for you're, you're just performing analytical procedures, okay? Also, if they increase their employees from 50 to 52 or from 50 to 45, then you have to make those adjustments, okay? You could compute direct labor as a per, direct labor as a percentage of sales with prior year. If there's a relationship between direct labor and sales, let's assume last year direct labor was a million and sales was 10 million. So direct labor to sales is 10%. You will do the same thing for this year. So you see if there's any misstatement in direct labor. And obviously, if it's indirect labor, it might be affecting inventory as well. That's another analytical procedure. And a third analytical procedure would be to compare commission expense as a percentage of sales. Basically the same thing. You would look at the commission, you divide them by sales, and there's a percentage, for example, 5%. Okay? And this, if this year, if last year were 5%, if there's no change in the commission, commission structure, just take whatever they have in commission divided by sales, it should give you 5%, assuming they did not increase or decrease their commission base. Okay, so here you're looking for problem with commission and commission liability. Uh, compare payroll tax as a percentage of salaries. Again, what you look, it's you look at payroll tax. What was the, how much taxes did they pay last year in payroll taxes? Let's assume they paid 300,000 and their payroll taxes were a million. This is way too high. Um, let's make it 100,000. So the payroll tax is 10%. So you would compare this to this year. Obviously, you adjust for if there's any change in the, ta in the tax rate. If the overall tax rate increases, then it should be more. If the overall tax rate went down, it should be less. But this is just an indication of if there's any major issues you need to be aware of. 
you could compute a crude payroll tax account with a uh, compare a crude payroll tax account with prior year what was the, what did they accrue last year what did they accrue this year and you could be looking for misstatements so those are some common analytical procedures now what i want to mention about payroll cycle analytical procedures are important why they are very predictable in other words if you know how many employees they have if you know how much employee is making then you can be you can run some analytical procedures and be pretty accurate and rely on those analytical procedures to make uh, a judgment about the balance. So that's why I, I, I emphasize this point. Uh, I spend a little bit more time giving examples because it's an important step with the payroll. So it's, it's useful. Remember, analytical procedure at this stage is optional, but for payroll, it's very useful. It's very effective. Okay, good. What else are we concerned with when it comes to balance accounts and uh, and expenses remember we are concerned with here we have we're going to have a lot of liabilities so we're concerned with basically two things two things we want to we're concerned with accuracy we want to make sure that accrual and the trial balance are stated at the correct amount what are we what are we saying by accrual remember when you pay an employee you debit expense and you credit various payable for example you credit um, federal income tax payable you credit state payable you credit local payable local taxes payable you might have 401k deduction also that's a payable because it's going to be withheld you might have uh, insurance you, you have all sorts of withholding so all of these are liabilities the first thing you want to make sure those liabilities are all correct okay that's the first thing you want to you want to make sure and they're all recorded obviously the other, the other thing you want to make sure is the cutoff. Are they recorded in the prior period? Those are the mainly, the mainly two things. But remember, every time you have liabilities, you, you're, you have to be looking for not recorded liabilities, basically emitting liabilities. Okay. But let's take a look at the liability account, the major liability account for, for any typical company. Okay. So we're going to look at the various accounts and we're going to, you know, review how do we, how do we uh, make sure they are the balances are correct the first thing is amount withheld from the employee pay so how much you're taking from the employee pay that's a liability and that's that's a big one because remember you're going to have federal tax income tax as, as i just showed you earlier so what do you do as long as internal control are prop are proper the cutoff is straightforward if the company is recording their payroll on a timely basis they have procedures to do so then the amount should be correct because the employee is looking over their paycheck you have government regulation government involved in this process in a sense that if there's any mistake they're going to come back so we can be pretty comfortable with this another liability with, with the payroll is accrued salaries and wages basically at the end of the period uh, the payroll cycle might fall, might fall between two accounting periods. So you have to accrue some wages and salaries. Now, how do you do this? Determine the company policy. When is their cutoff? You know, when was the last time the employee worked? When was the last time they were paid? The company Determine the company policy and recompute the amount yourself. Accrued commission. Yeah, this could be a little bit more challenging because remember, when it's a commission could be based on different, si different types of agreements, especially with executives. OK, and when it when it is with executives, they might have some sort of an agreement and different agreement with different executive. Therefore, you might have to read the agreement to see how the commission is structured. Is it based on performance? Is it based on the stock price? Always compare it to the prior period. Always, always, always a good starting point in any thing and audit is to compare whatever you have to the prior period, because assuming the prior period is audited and you trust the number, that's what we're assuming here. That will be your starting point. Accrued bonuses is another major liability account. Review the minutes for the board of directors because this is when they determine the bonus and compare what they stated and just do a quick analytical procedures and compare that to the bonuses that you are accruing. The company could accrue vacation, sick pay, other benefit. Okay. Again, review the company policy and recalculate, recompute. It's it's not it's not difficult. A payroll taxes is another accrual. What we do what we do is examine the tax form in subsequent period to determine the amount that should be withheld. That should be. This is not she. Should be withheld. Okay, because the company will have to, to file their payroll taxes. They have to file forms with the state, with the federal government. Look at these forms and compare their amount to what we have on record. Okay. Those are the liability accounts. The expense account, we're going to look at some uh, uh, major expense accounts on the, uh, on the payroll cycle. Now, remember, as I stated earlier, analytical procedures are very important in this process. So if you're comfortable with analytical procedures, you will do less work on the expense end. Internal control are important as, as well as test of 
transaction. So when we are auditing the expense account. What are the major expense account that we have to look to look at? Um, officers' compensation. Now, officers' compensation, remember, the board of directors usually determine their, uh, their pay. So you want to review this and compare this to the 10K filing because in the 10K filing, you have to disclose how much you are paying them. And remember, when you are auditing, when you are auditing this account, these people with authority, so they, they can maybe be able to change their, uh, their compensation a little bit. A case in point, um, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to like explain this, uh, in detail, but, uh, Steve Jobs, the CEO of Apple, he changed his, his stock option. He, he moved his, he backdated his stock options. Because why? Because he was an executive and he was able to do so. Now, he was under investigation, but the point is executives can do so. Yes, Steve Jobs. You could Google it. There's actually a show about him on Netflix and he and they show you when the investigation was taking place and he talks about it. Commissions. Commission, that's another that's another that's another expense. If commission is based on something specific like sales and you know the sales amount, then it's easy to verify. Um, what are some other expense account? You could have payroll tax expense. Again, if analytical procedures doesn't indicate a problem, you, you should be comfortable with that account. Total payroll. Total payroll is another issue. You would compare total payroll expense with tax return because the tax return goes with the government. Look what they're filing with the government. Compare that to the general ledger and look at their W-2. Again, also analytical procedures will help substantially. A company could have contract labor like they might have to, I, to outsource their, I, their IT. Simply compare the amount they paid with the signed contract with that with that company, and whatever they agreed upon, it should be the case. Now, uh, the last thing that we're going to discuss real quick is presentation and disclosure. Usually, that's not extensive unless what they have they have stock options and some complicated or advanced, <laughs> well, not advanced, but some complicated uh, compensation uh, plans. Then you would have to. Um, disclose this in the footnotes. Also, if they have stock options, that also if they might affect earnings per share, it might dilute earnings per share. That's why you have to disclose this. But generally, it's not an issue for companies that don't have complicated or advanced compensation uh, plans. Um, that's that's it pretty much as form of lectures in this payroll cycle. I might work an example or two just to illustrate the points. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me or see me in class. If you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard, it's worth it.